The initial tail is the first tail in the sequence of arrows, and the final head is the final head in the sequence of arrows. We don't have to change any other charges, because everyone in the middle is both gaining and losing. It's always good to make sure that the net charge is balanced. The initial net charge was negative one, and now our final net charge is negative one. So we know we got that right. Okay, um, and we're done. So the hard There's, part yeah. about all these reactions isn't actually doing the mechanism, finding the products, it's knowing which one to use. I think they're both hard, but yeah, in many cases, the hard part is knowing which one to use. Yeah, it is. It's okay. gonna click once. Yeah, I have a feeling it is. Like, tomorrow, all yeah. of a sudden, we're gonna okay. Oh. okay. So. Okay, very good. So we really have to master <laughs> both of those skills. <laughs> okay, so now let's see E1. Right. Well, one second, let's summarize for this. So, uh, let's see. Because remember, the goal here, uh, I was talking about how you guys have to do a lot of practice, but I mentioned last time, practice is useless unless you keep identifying the patterns. The purpose of the practice is to ask what pattern is this exemplifying. Okay, so, oh, by the way, notice there's no deprotonations we need because nobody has a positive charge here. All right, so what does it take to do an E2 reaction? Well, identify the alpha carbon and actually put in an alpha for the alpha carbon. And very important, now you have to identify the beta carbon. So put in a beta for the beta carbon. Um, the very common mistake here is for people to steal a proton from the alpha carbon. All right, but no, the base steals the proton from the beta carbon, uh, and then it sets us on a whole chain reaction, whereas we form a pi bond between the beta and the alpha, and the leaving group leaves from the alpha carbon. So keep labeling the alpha and the beta carbons for an E2 reaction. And again, what, 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 did, what do you have involved in an elimination reaction? An elimination reaction involves a base who steals a proton, which frees electrons to form a pi bond. Elimination reactions in form of, it involve a base that steals a proton, which frees the electrons to form a pi bond, and kicks off the leading group. What if okay. there were two carbons on the alpha carbon? Ah, that's a good question. That basically you're asking, what if there was two beta carbons? Yeah. Yeah. In that case, there's two possible products. And one thing you would be tested on is what would be the major product and what would be the minor product. So that's a whole big thing. Yeah. Um, so that's a whole big thing that would take some time to go over. So we could go over that now, or we can go into E1, whichever you like. Um, that is covered in the that's covered in the second language book as well, like by the way. Finalize. Yeah, like let's just finish. Okay. Yeah, so let's do that. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see here. Uh, E2. Uh, so we were going to go over which beta carbon is more important. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys heard about Hoffman and Zaitsev in class? No? Okay, so um, maybe that's not too crucial to your instructor. So maybe we'll put that off until we see a, a homework problem about that. Okay. Okay. It's also covered in the second language book, by the way. They talk about which beta carbon to use. So, um, okay. I'll check just in case. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. So maybe we'll go to E1 and, and see the basic ideas there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Hoffman rule is still like chapter eleven, and we're only up to chapter nine. Good. Oh yeah, that's right. You guys, um, you guys probably will cover that, but not until after the midterm. I forgot about that. All right, that's a good point. Okay. All right. So. All right. So probably on the next midterm, you'll only have one beta carbon. Final. Pardon? We only have one left. Only one left? Oh, I'm off. Well, okay. Next anyway. midterm, then we have, have a final. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, let's decide, uh, let's, let's copy this in our notes and, and decide what mechanism we're going to have here. So it could be S1 right. or E1. Okay, yeah, how did you determine that? Oxygen is neutral. Yeah, we have a neutral and oxygen. Has the leaving group is on the secondary carbon. Yeah. Right. So uh, we know what row we're in because we have a secondary carbon, and we know what column we're in because we have a neutral oxygen. Um, so this is going to be SN1. I think the handout says SN1 slash E1, right? Which means SN1 and E1 almost always go together. So we're going to get a mixture of both SN1 and E1. SN1 and E1 almost always go together, so we're going to get a mixture of both of those. Okay, um, let's just focus on the E1 reaction. 
Well, first of all, who's the alpha carbon? We're connected to the yeah. thing. All right, maybe I'll number these one, two, and three. It's always good to number just for reference. So these are not IUPAC numbers, but just a number for reference. All right, so here's our alpha carbon. Um, and uh, what are we going to do now? All right, now an E1 reaction is kind of similar to an SN1, although not exactly. So can anyone then, by analogy, figure out what would happen first in an E1 reaction? Yes. Yeah, how many steps are there going to be in an E1? Two. Two. Two steps. And what happens in the first step? The leaving group leaves. leaves. All right, so let's draw the mechanism for that. So this is elimination with one thing in the first step. So it's also going to form a pi bond in this one. Sounds good. Yeah, so let's make sure we get the right product here. Now, the most important thing here, as usual, is the charges. The initial, who's, at the, who's losing these electrons? The alpha carbon. Since it started neutral, it has to end up positive. And then the iodide was gaining the electron, so it ended up negative. So here's our carbocation. Wait, this is just a random question before I ask it. Um, you know how before we, we said we didn't learn that Hoffman thing? Does that mean that um, for all the E2s, we're only going to have one applicable beta carbon? I think so. Okay. Yeah, that would be my guess. Okay, so uh, let's see. So that gives us this here. Okay. All right. And now what happens in an E1 is just the same as what happens in an E2. It just happens in two separate steps. So what should happen now? Now the oxygen. H2. Yeah, H2. It's going to take a hydrogen off. The beta carbon. It's going to take a hydrogen from whom? The beta carbon. Yeah, not the alpha carbon, but the beta carbon. But, but now we have two beta carbons. That's right. But I gave you a simple case where the beta carbons are equivalent, so it doesn't matter which one oh. gets attacked, right? We're going to get the same product regardless of which one we attack in this case. Um, so let's, for simplicity, say we're going to attack this one. Okay. So it's always a good idea to keep labeling your beta carbon. Okay, so let's see here. Um, what's happening to this pair of electrons? What's well, going into a bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen? Now, um, this is at the initial tail. So I hope you all remember to fix the charge here. This is very important. What's going to be the charge on this oxygen? Positive. Yeah, so make sure you got this charge. By the way, um, so we could draw this like this, because now the, this pair of electrons is here. This is not the conventional way this is drawn, though. So we're usually drawn like this. You might have seen this in problems. This is hydronium. All right. This is better for our purposes because it showed what happened to the electrons. But this is just a hydronium ion, so these are the same thing. Okay. And that frees up this pair of electrons to form this pi bond. I connected at the other one, like we said, right now it wouldn't really matter. 
I'm sorry? Like I connected it at the top one. Yeah, here. that's right. It doesn't really matter if you're forming the pi bond here or here because uh, they're equivalent uh, carbons. And we also have to change the charge at the final head. Well, who's gaining the electrons? This guy. So he went from positive to neutral. That was the whole driving force of uh, this reaction at this point. All right, and uh, that gives us our products here. So you can see that what happened here is precisely what would have happened in an E2. It just happened in two steps. So first, the leaving group left, and then the base stole the proton. Whereas in an E2, the leaving group would leave simultaneously with the base, stealing the proton from the beta carbon. 